Welcome to Second Command. I'm uh, Matt Walsh. My name's Tim Simons. And I'm Hugh Laurie. This is an honor, Mr. Laurie. Are you a sir? Were you ever knighted? I'm not a sir, no. Really? Were no. you invited and turned it down? No. Never? No. But what is an OBE versus a CBE? And you're both. I, oh. I well, a CBE is, I suppose, technically a Above an OBI, I am now a commander of the Order of the British Empire. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and I expect. What are your official responsibilities? I expect to be treated accordingly. <laughs> um, well, it's the firstborn of the village uh, comes to me. I don't have any responsibilities, none whatsoever. Um, how did you earn a CBE? I don't know. I don't know how it works. What, I, what was the ceremony? But you go to the palace. You don't go to the palace because you're one not a does. citizen. No, well, one does. Yeah, and you stand in line, and you then you chat to the uh, the monarch, and um, uh, they read out a citation, mm -hmm. which was awkward. I remember the uh, two chaps before me. They were soldiers, and they were very sort of erect, fit-looking guys. And they read out the citation, you know, for uncommon gallantry in the face mm -hmm. of the. <laughs> they rescued orphans uh, from a, you know, a burning building, and, and Sergeant So and So was wounded four times, and and then I my name came out as Hugh Laurie for services to entertainment, <laughs> <laughs> which just, you know, I. Bleh. I don't know what I, I don't know what it's for. I don't really know what it's for. Do they bless you with a sword? No, that's 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 a, a knight. If, you, uh, if, if you're a knight, yeah. So it's just a ha reading of a paper and then hand. Do they pin something on you? Yes, you do. There's a medal. Yes, okay. it's a medal. Cool. I can't remember if they pin it on you. Uh, I can't remember. Okay. Where is it now? The medal. It's. Uh, it's on my person, but I won't, <laughs> I won't tell you where. It's, uh, I know I travel everywhere with it. Is there, were, were there, was there anybody at that ceremony, at that ceremony where you were looking around like, who's this fucking asshole? Like, why is he getting one of these? No, my, no, no okay. that's not my, my inclination is to th imagine that that's what everyone is doing oh. to me. <laughs> So they they've all invented some cancer cure, or they've mm -hmm. uh, they've done something remarkable. They've climbed a mountain, and they're looking at me, thinking, "What? This? Who's this guy? Who's, what's he done?" Um, that's my. That's just. My and is an OBE a lesser honor? You got a CBE oh, and an well, OBE? Uh, th there's no lesser and greater. Um, <laughs> uh, it's all. We're all. Uh, yes, I suppose so. What does OBE stand for? Officer of the Order of the British Empire. And you get that first. Yeah. And what was that one for? Entertainment as well? <laughs> I really don't know. Oh, God. It's so tawdry, isn't it? I feel embarrassed. No, it's no, interesting. It's, a great, it's, a great, it's sure. obviously a great honor, and it's a bit of a thrill. And I took um, some friends. You, you know, you can take four friends along with you, and they're in the palace, and they mm -hmm. wear a hat, and it's great. You know, yeah. So there's a lot of pageantry. And uh, th that sort of side of it, that's what... That's what the monarchy does well. Yeah. You know, they put on a good show, and everyone comes away feeling, well, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's it. Beyond that, I can't explain it. It kind of seems like they're, yeah, like they're really good at the pageantry, and they're, like, not great at being grandparents. <laughs> I don't, well, you're so, it's so rare that you get both in one individual. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. Uh, you're either I mean, a good party planner, or you're exactly. either good with or, people, very, yeah. or you're a good guest. It's it's an uncommon <laughs> mixture. Yeah. Yes, I suppose that's probably true. Yeah, but you you quite like some pageantry over here. You know, you're big on the bugles and the yeah military uh, medals of honor and all all of that sort of stuff. Congressional this and uh, we are. Can I tell you? There was a a moment where I got to go over. I was in London. Uh, working with Chris Addison on a movie that he was directing and I got to I went to like the costume fitting that just happened to be next to a like an airfield where they were going to, going to fly one of the uh, planes that flew in the Battle of Britain what is the name of that plane that has like the very distinct sound do you know what I'm talking about the well there's a Spitfire Spitfire yeah yes. yeah that was the uh, that was um... it was a it was like a Spitfire that had flown in the Battle of Britain, right. and it was the anniversary of it. And like there were just like seven dudes around, just kind of pushing it out of the hangar, and then they flew it, and I was there. And I was like, oh, if this was an American celebration of a battle with a, a like a 
a plane that was in that battle. There will be 500 people here. Well, that's really interesting you say that because when they made the very great, I mean, it, it, it looks dated now, but there was a great film made called The Battle of Britain. And it was one of those all-star casts, uh, Olivier and Ralph Richardson, and they were all in it. Um, all the airplanes they used had been maintained by American aviators. It was oh. the Americans who were much more enthused about commemorating those particular aeroplanes yeah. and the whole tradition of, of whatever you would call it, aerial combat and the skills and the, and the history that, that, that goes with those aeroplanes. They were all flown in the film by Americans because the British, for some reason, just went, oh, we're done with that. We'd, or we don't know. That's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> but the Americans have got so much more... <laughs> vigor, you know, and, yeah. they, and they, as you say, they commemorate and they they gather twice a year and they look at each other's planes and say, you need a new, you know, like a silly one, if you like, or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever they do. It's just interesting that they, the Americans are much, are much better at that. Um, well, I think, too, we're maybe bit, we're a bit sloppy, I think. Well, I think, too, you guys are used to wars and, and I think <laughs> we might have a nostalgia for a war that happened over there where you guys are like, Jesus, let's not even talk about this one. It like, could be. It a little be. bit, right? I don't well, know. Well, except when now we seem to be, we've gone right into a nostalgia phase of this was our finest hour and... Make Britain what, great again? It, yeah, it is. Oh, it no. Is. I'm afraid so. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. It's happening around the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, that we all had some, there is some period in a nation's past that we, we must try and recapture. And of course, there's a great line in a Dennis Potter uh, play called Brimson and Treacle where Denham Elliott plays the character, I think, and he, he says at one point, I just, he gets so frustrated, he says, I just, I just want things to stay the same, only back a bit. <laughs> it's just so, it's so beautiful. It's that thing that we, we're sort of craving. We, we just want, there was some, just over the valley, you know, there, there was that magical time when we were free and innocent. Of course yeah. we weren't, we were miserable. And yeah. we had tonsillitis and she wouldn't go out with us or whatever it was, you know, yeah. we had some huge problem, but that's not how we remember anything. But it's, and it's so seductive and it seems, to be, politicians seem to be able to use it to persuade people of all kinds of things that they imagine that they have lost that were better. But they weren't, they yeah. really weren't. They weren't in our, in my childhood even but if you try, as you say, if you go back pre-penicillin, you know, try spend a week in 1300 and see how enjoyable that is. And, <laughs> well, it's such an innocent time. Yeah, you're dead at 31. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, and six out of your eight children also died, by the way. And th so this is, yeah. And the only reason you attempted to have eight children was because you needed extra you, hands on the farm. Right, yeah. right. And you also needed to take account of the fact that not all of them were going to make it. Right. So you, <sighs> so you needed got to, to overproduce. You've got to overshoot the mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, we have Hugh Laurie in studio with us today. I know. It's exciting. This is a big get for us, Tim. It's a big get. Who played Tom James on a show called Veep. One thing that I had a plan to do coming in was like sometimes people, and I don't want to say our audience complains, but it is. It's what they do. They complain that we don't. Maybe we don't hit enough Veep stuff or we don't get to the Veep stuff early enough. And I was going to like hit you with a Veep thing right away so that we could vague away from it. And but then we just didn't do but that. But you haven't done that. Have no, you? I haven't no, done that at no, all. I failed in that. Yeah, you failed. But I'm going to hit you with a Veep thing right go now. Go ahead. Um, I forgot what it was. I'll go. Yeah, go. So one thing Tim and I have uh, gone through many episodes. We're up to season five. And Tom James came in season three, maybe? End of You won't know. I'm not asking you. Four. End of four. four. End, end of, of four. four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To much uh, fanfare, and you deliver, you're wonderful in the show. But what is fascinating to watch about Tom is he is irresponsibly charming in that, like, you win people over, but you're a devil. Like, with Selena, her first impression is, like, you know she's awful. <laughs> like, if I was getting into camp with Selena, I know what I'm getting. But with Tom, which is crafty... And it's also like, oh, when do, when does he, because oftentimes we look at these characters and go, oh, when did they turn evil? And with Tom, you ride that line so well, like you'll say something evil or something really cruel with a smile, and then a beat later it'll finally land on the person who's receiving it, and it'll totally sideswipe them. So I'm just curious, I guess that's a long way to say, how did you get into the role, and were there any 
people you modeled it after. Uh, it, that was long. <laughs> that was, that, like, was there anything useful? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I well, I got into the role because I had a strange approach, rather like being asked to join MI6, which I haven't been asked to do, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I, see you succeeding in that. Yeah, but you but seem like did, not brave enough to to say, to succeed in that. Okay. Yeah, that's not an. In I'm not brave enough. Well, I was also just going to say, like, maybe they're probably aiming for people that, like, you know, you bounce back or quicker when you're in your 20s. Like, no offense. Oh, right, right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying you're you're in great shape. Like, you know, you're you're fit. You're handsome. Of course, I mean, like, and you have too much to lose. You have children. Oh they want God, orphans yeah. who are desperate. Yeah. And, you know what yeah, I mean? You're yeah. not a great candidate Con for many reasons. Convicts. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Good safe. I mean, yeah. Skyfall. Dude's parents are dead. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Batman. Yeah. yeah. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to make a note. Not have not been asked to join well, MI6. Well, I got I, I was asked to meet in a, a hotel in central London, and it was not made clear to me what it was going to be about. But there was this fellow Armando Yanucci, and in fact, he arrived as he often did, with a sort of um, surrounded by a posse of bishops, you know, <laughs> writers, cardinals who follow him around. <laughs> They turned out to be writers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, really funny to think about Roger Drew being referred to as a cardinal. Yeah. <laughs> or Tony Roach. Well, that's that's how they struck me. I, yeah, I, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, and he suggested this thing, and I thought, I mean, this is this is extraordinary. I love this show. It feels very, very alien to me stylistically. It just feels like a an arena in which I would not flourish. Mm-hmm. I had just got the last thing I'd done, not I had just finished it, but it, you know, a year or two before I'd been doing House, which was a very, was very written in, in, and I mean that in a very good way. It was, it was like, it was more of a sort of chamber piece, you know, like everything was partly because it had to be because of the technical demands of medicine and so on. It had to be just so it couldn't be one syllable either way because mm -hmm. that's what it needed to be. And I could tell that that was not Veep. The Veep, no. Veep was jazz, and uh, I thought, blimey, I, d I don't know if uh, this freestyling thing is really for me. I don't, I don't know if I'd thrive at it. But I was so flattered and so excited by the prospect because I just loved the show. Um, all of you, obviously, some more than others, but we won't get into that. I mean, well, since. Since you've called me an unsuitable <laughs> candidate for MI6, I feel like I stand by that. I, I stand I, by that. I don't think that's I felt rude. Like Mike McClintock was the one character that didn't really. <laughs> that Thank you for remembering my character's name. Didn't really gel. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I thought everyone was fair great. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and, uh, and and it remained incredibly daunting to me for the first I don't know month, two months, three months. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my view of the television world and the entertainment world in the UK is that it's it can be very it's not like a huge group of people like that had you an arm not there are three worked, of us there are three of you yeah yeah man it probably pretty tough for you, that one Steven, guy yeah. who wasn't there at that meeting with all the yeah, bishops yeah, that one guy being yeah. like man I wish I could be in yeah, there yeah. Um, and you had not worked with Armando before no. and you hadn't had you ever met before you had never uh, no I didn't uh, I don't think we had no. Okay. Obviously, I you know I knew everything about him. I looked him up, mm -hmm. um, and uh, hugely admired everything he'd done, uh, right back to the, well, in fact, right back to the 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 radio show that then became the day to day. I absolutely loved it. But I, I I knew that it was a very different style to anything that I was used to, and and was therefore it was unnerving. I was unnerved. I don't know if you were unnerved. Well, you're a you're a. I was more, a, you are a jazz man. You are a jazz I'm man. I'm an improviser, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I guess, was there a politician in your life or that you sort of modeled Tom after? I'm just curious because it's a wonderful character. Uh, I'm not going to compliment you too much because there's a good rivalry between us still. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but do you, I don't know, because like for me, Mike, I knew politics from Chicago, so my take on politics came from my upbringing in Chicago, if you will. And I'm just mm. curious, not was there really, a way into Tom that... Not really, because I'm, I'm so unfamiliar with American politics. I mean, I'm much more familiar now because it has become such 
an astounding spectacle for the oh world God. to enjoy yeah. and, and follow. Yeah, it's going great for us over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, at that point, no, I just didn't. I, if you'd asked me who the, the Speaker of the House was, I wouldn't have known who that was. I wouldn't have known who any of these offices, office holders were. Okay. Um, so I didn't really have anything to go on. And maybe, I, I'm not sure actually, if Armando did either, I think he just had an idea of a particular type of, type of it's more a character in a sort of Elizabethan court, isn't it? That sort of devious um, manipulator who has the ear of, of the, uh, the sovereign, mm -hmm. but is always plotting to undermine and yeah, this is a question that I've had as we've gone back and watched it. Tom James, over the course of the show, reveals himself to be very like Machiavellian and like mm. working behind the scenes and sort of just as backstabby as anybody else. When he first comes in, there is like a folksy authenticity to him, right? That play as if he's like truly you feel like he's the last honest man that's there right willing right. to play the game but ultimately is like yeah i think drugs should be legalized because they do great harm at what point did you know that he was going to be that sort of backstabby guy well i suppose i had a suspicion from the beginning because that there was a lot of backstabbing going on a lot of backs were being stabbed in the show mm -hmm. i mean on on every level they mm -hmm. were just people were saying things they did not mean and could not deliver people were trying to take credit for things they hadn't done or or, or shirk the blame for things they had done that was the sort of that was the currency of the show and i assumed that that he would be in that vein um now i'm i'm now thinking about the question you just asked about i suppose the way you've just described Tom James is the way I've heard people talk about Bill Clinton. That mm. he comes into the room and he oh, shines yeah. and he looks you in the eye like no one's ever looked you in the yes. eye. And he presses your hand and you feel like you're the only person in the world. And, yeah. and everything he says just has a ring of sort of salty truth about it. But he's funny and he's nimble and he makes it seem fun. Yeah. He makes it seem fun. And I think Tom James, that one of the ideas that they had was that Tom James enjoyed himself. You know, he sprang out of bed in the morning and thought, what, what, what fun can we have today? Yeah. Uh, didn't seem to be afraid of much. Yeah. He had a sort of, uh, what's the worst that could happen? Well, yeah. I suppose World War Three, but, but beyond that, what's the That's worst? That's unlikely. That, what's, that is <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, I suppose Clinton is. Is a good example. Uh, yeah, I see that totally. And uh, he feels like one of those guys that would, he would just like, you know, say like a little, like a colloquial phrase that nobody has ever said before, but he does it with such a plum, you think that it's like Scott Clackham, our, our uh, locations. locations guy, uh, who's now, a, who's now like on the production and on the producing end. He would say stuff like, yeah, man, my grandmother had my grandmother had quarters falling out of her little coin purse all the time, man. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. But when he said it, I was like, yeah, yeah, man, she did. Yeah. And somehow he related that to production that like your grandmother was losing quarters out of her coin purse or whatever. It has that feeling. Do, have you have you run that to earth? What does that actually mean? I have no idea. Or was it literally that? I'm making happened? a little note to myself to yeah, to yeah. just delete that it, whole part. <laughs> edit. Talk um, to I, the editor. Um, I know you did like for many many years. Did an American accent on House? Was improvising in an American accent number one difficult or in any way like a worry going in? Yeah. Or did that did. Yeah. No, it was. My, I, I found it much more difficult because what I realized that I was doing because I cheat. I cheat all the time by finding words that I know that I can say okay and avoiding words that I can't, which is just an extra layer of mental calculation you have to do quite quickly to think. Oh, I know what I should say. Can't say that. Damn it. Can't say. Can't say the city of New York in an American accent. What does it sound like if you do? I'm not going to do it, okay? Because those days are behind me now. Yeah. He's a smart uh, actor. Why would he embarrass yeah, himself? Thank yeah, thank you, thank well, you. Yeah, not a brave actor. And not, not <laughs> someone smart. Never... We're none of us are brave. No, We're not know, MI6 I'm brave. I'm pretty not, brave. Not I could get in make MI6. it in, in MI6, but but uh, you know, no, I'm, I couldn't. It would be too. A murder's another one. Okay. Um, Murder. I, right. Yeah, it okay. sounds to me like even Americans struggle with that one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Which is odd because you do quite a lot of We do a lot. I have a question for you. Yeah. This is something I've asked, or uh, it's a theory I have. I could write the most terrible script in the world, but if the main character had a really broad, deep southern accent, like from To Kill a Mockingbird, I bet I could bait a really good British actor to jump on that project. Do you believe that? Because of the southern accent. Walsh thinks specifically I the think, southern I accent. I think British, good British actors yeah. are suckers for projects where they get to do a, much in the same way an I, American might want to do a Cockney, perhaps, but I that's my theory. There is some truth in that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I mean, I can't think of who that would apply to immediately. I, I don't have a target. But if you gave me <laughs> nearly eight seconds, I could probably come up with a list of 100 <laughs> <laughs> who would absolutely take that bait. Because I've seen it in projects, yeah. and I'm like, you took that because you got to go full deep in a big old southern you accent. You wanted to show yeah. range. <laughs> yes, and just range. go over the top. and Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for being honest. No, I think that's, that's a theory true. that's sort of been... Out although, there mine. although I did not, I, I tried doing in the very early days of House. I, you know, I th maybe it was actually the uh, the audition stage. We did try it English, and it lasted for half a day. They just went, "No, nah, it's not." You were were you filming it even, uh, or no, just I think in the audition? Just taping it in, okay. in an audition, and I think I think they probably felt the character is alien enough, is is, is sort of unlikable enough. <laughs> Uh, we don't need to add some goddamn foreigner thing. Unrelatable uh, exactly. element. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's another good show, but we're not going to talk about House. No. My other question was, we're in not. general... We're not. We're not. I just up. said we're not. My other question is... It just seemed like you really laid down an ultimatum without discussing. Well, I'm not you do what you want. We going to. Or he can do what he wants. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about okay. it. Okay. Uh, what is your general impression of, or memories of... Our, our rehearsal process because you said it was you knew it was going to be like nothing it was going to be more like jazz than like this formalized written yeah. show you were coming out of so what are some of the impressions or memories you have from any of those rehearsal I, days I was astounded by the agility you as you know well it's it is known you are a slightly freakish uh, in your ability to generate an endless stream of Nonsense. Nonsense. Sure. <laughs> really. It's parlayed uh, into like I have a home and I put does. kids <laughs> and I put kids in a private school. Many congratulations. It's very fortunate. Abs absolutely. I've hoodwinked a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I thought the entire cast, the the, the agility and the uh, sort of playfulness, and I suppose willing to risk, although it wasn't much of a risk because you were also fucking good at it, that they, you were not risking anything because you knew you could do it. Um, I found it, it was, to, to someone like me, it was, uh, it was intimidating, particularly, you know, with the added stresses of the, of the accent and so on. And also feeling like the newcomer, you, you, you know, the new kid yeah. in school is always, um, and everyone else seems so comfortable and they've got their, you know, they've got their own mug and their own inside jokes and their own, and you still do. Uh, yeah. 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 A lot of them, we actually have like a little text chain that we intentionally leave you out of. <laughs> Oh, don't they all make them paranoid? Don't do that. Don't. Well, <laughs> but did you ever get to a point where, like, oh, I can be terrible here and I can actually find this useful? Or did you always stay in that and sort of? I mean, you're a great actor, but did, no, you, no, I think I'm always, um, always watching myself. I don't think I ever get lost in a thing to the point where I just sort of just don't care and I'll try this and if it doesn't even work, in a rehearsal room yeah, where there's no stakes literally no stakes because yeah. it is to kind of bang out it's almost worse in a rehearsal room yeah I find because because it's your peers and their judgment or whatever you sense from their reaction as to whether you succeeded or failed is more important than anybody else's um, and you were all so good at it and of course Julia is I am sure you've had people saying lots of lovely things about uh, Julia, but she is the best I've, I've ever seen, ever, ever. Yeah. And not just in the, the stewardship, the execution of that character, but in the way she inhabited the, the role of boss. You know, yeah. she bossed it in such a, in such a lovely way, in mm -hmm. a way that allowed even me a degree of confidence and space and sort of playfulness to 
and as we all know, you know, the, the person who's at the top of the, um, the tree, they, they do. It's undeniable. They, they probably shouldn't, but they do set the tone. Um, and that allows other people to give of their best. And she inherited that space from Armando because he created a very yeah. playful, let's fuck around kind of. Yeah. He was obviously a benevolent dictator, but he offered a lot of that space. Right, right in the beginning when he assembled the whole thing. But you're right, Julia's the best. Did you guys right away have the kind of chemistry that you show, that you have like in those, like those scenes where you guys are like yelling at one another, but then you end up having sex in the, like, and <laughs> in the Tony walks room. in. And then even the, those scenes like later on when you're married and she's like, like, I can't remember what the, what your, your wife's name was but she was like is that her name or the drug that you take in order to fuck her like <laughs> you had this sort of like this like true extreme love hate like a uh, uh, like undeniable attraction to one another in this show did you guys have that kind of chemistry right away i well i always assumed that she hated me uh -huh. i thought that was the uh, i was I, I was having to work at the love part um mm -hmm. uh, you know from from her side mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, because i found her terrifying because she's so awesomely good she's the she's the woman you want to make laugh you know what i mean yeah. she, she there's something about so precious about her any sort of response that is, you want her approval. Mm -hmm. I think you want her approval within the show and you want it sort of generally yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. And so it, it, it took a while. I was so in awe that it, uh, it did take a while, but she, of course, I'm sure is aware of that. She, she is so generous and so accommodating with people. She must be constantly dealing with people who are quaking in their boots yeah. to be in her presence. And she's got to sort of, find some way, in a Clintonish way, she's got to find some way of letting people be who they are and letting them relax and getting the best out of them mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or give, give, give her their best. Um, and so that was entirely down to her. I feel like she, she sort of orchestrated that so, so beautifully. I, I don't want to put you on the spot. It, it seems, I guess it's funny to hear you say, like, you know, she's a person who is probably used to talking to people who are like quaking in their boots. I, I don't, I mean, like you might brush this comment off, but you are also a person that I think brings that response in. You have a, like a well, very- I don't bring yes. it from him, do I? No, you do. I, I had tremendous <laughs> reverence I mean, for I mean, you I mean, when I-, I Oh, when we first met. Well, yeah. yeah. Don't then, meet your then heroes. Then sort of- Yeah, yeah, don't meet your heroes. Exactly. That, that holds true, yeah. but in the beginning, <laughs> in the be you're just an average, decent enough fellow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I think I'm I so think glad to I those. Came. <laughs> Your self esteem is going to be <laughs> riding sky high. Yeah. By the way, you getting those medals—that's a great thing for your kids, regardless of the silliness of it. Like, if I was a kid and my dad had a royal. Well, that's funny you said that because one of I was uncertain. There are some people. I'm guessing. There are some people who turn these things down. They think, uh, you know, and I used to be a very much a Republican. I had no truck with the monarchy. I thought the whole thing was absurd. And then I sort of, you know, over the years, you kind of think, ah, oh, well, where's the harm? Um, you know, uh, it's quite nice seeing horses with jingly jangly things uh, <laughs> cantering down the mall. We've paid um, for that palace well, anyway, exactly. so I might as well get an invite. Exactly. Right? <laughs> but anyway, when, when, the, when the offer came up, came up I was I was in two minds, and I was thinking, oh, I don't know if that's really this is a, an appropriate thing to be doing or accepting. And my middle son, who was sort of early teens at the time, I think, he said, I thought his reaction was so fantastically healthy. He said, "Oh, you'd have to be so up yourself to turn that down." Oh, oh, wow! And I thought that's, you know, who are you? That's brilliant. Yeah, it is. I actually yeah. really like that. I, it's that sort of splendidly unneurotic, and, and just be grateful, Dad, yes, and take yes, the yes. fucking take, trophy. Yeah. Take, yeah. yeah, don't don't go make it's not about you. No, you know, just just sort of go with it. Yeah, I thought that was splendid. Yeah, um, and and uh, so I now ever since then I defer to him in all matters, investment advice, everything. Did oh, you my. ask him about doing this podcast? I did. It. And I what did. was his advice? It was a big head shake, actually. He said... <laughs> a big one like this, where it, up and down no, like that? That's a nod. Oh. Oh. This would be a shake. That's okay. A, okay. okay. Must, maybe the translation is different, like the UK to the US. Maybe it's Maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah. 
Okay. Just there is that. a no, no. There is a country where it's the other way around, isn't it? Is there? Is it? Yeah. Where would the, it be? in like Russia or something? When they do this, it's uh, it's no, it's no. I think it's yeah. Russia. Is it? I think so. when they go yeah, they you do that. You better be right. I think so. Yeah. Or Turkey. Could we pause, look it up, and then behave like we knew? Aaron, can you? We can uh, have no, 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 our we assistant. Have to, no. Well, I, we I don't won't. mind confessing to ignorance. Okay. I don't think that you. I don't think you have to worry about being considered ignorant for not knowing. That that feels like a pretty niche oh. bit of trivia to know. I have a. I don't but, think. You but have to but, worry but about. that's that's all I am. I'm just <laughs> held together with niche <laughs> trivia. So uh, I have a story that. Uh, relates to you because you were there. So we went and saw the jazz movie. What was it called? With Whiplash. Whiplash. And you came with oh us, and it, it was oh, one of our right, yeah. it was one of our nights out. And yeah, you, you were Theater. in town, and we went to the Charles and had a lovely dinner. And afterwards, oh, I think this everyone. No, it's not. No, it's not. Everyone's I, sort of raving about the movie, and I remember talking to you about it. And you were sort of like you made a really good point. I don't. This isn't to put you on the. I I appreciate it because you yeah. basically said nobody who's good at jazz or is a true artist in an art form I ne is going to be that. Well, this is my okay, memory. All right. mm -hmm. Don't you dare change my memory, you Lori. <laughs> okay. It is mine. I told right. my children this story. All right. I'm going to give it to them when I die. No, that the gist of it was if you're a great artist, like even Beethoven when he wrote the Fifth Symphony, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's one of the symphonies. You one wrote. of his, his in fifth symphonies. I think dun, it was dun, the fifth dun, dun, one. It might have been the fifth. I think. Dun, 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 yeah. That one. Correct. Mm -hmm. He probably, if it was still sitting on his desk when he woke up the next morning, he's probably like, oh, I kind of want to. You're never sort of done tweaking and changing. There's nothing that rigid when you're inside uh, an art form. And that was sort of your critique of the movie. And that was a keen insight to something that well, it, I, I took at face it, value. It, it wasn't. I don't know if it was a critique of the movie. It might have been a critique of the whole idea of an academy of art, which I'm a very, uh, partly because yeah. I never went to one. Yeah. So I have no experience of it. But I find, you know, the bearded men who take a, a, make a text sacred and say that all students must henceforth follow the exact, no, that's a dotted minim, that's not a, you know, not my tempo. You know, well, if they just did two takes, they might, they might even recorded five takes, and that was the one that, you know, was released. They might, there might have been five different tempos, tempi. Um, and I just thought that whole, I have an aversion to that uh, academy feel of any art form, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's acting or, or music. I think it's stifling, and it's there to prop up the power of the people who've, maneuvered themselves into the that. academics yeah. of that. Yeah. Academics or the sort of the mullahs, you know, who will take a who will take a sacred text and they will say, We are only we can properly interpret this um this holy screed. And I, I that gets my back up. I, I find that really depressing. Like it's against the concept of art in a way. It is. Right? And I, I who was the uh, who was the drummer that it was all modeled on? Who was the guy who Buddy played Rich? Buddy no. Rich. I mean, maybe Buddy Rich was a not my tempo kind of guy. It's got to be exactly 178.48 and nothing faster or slower. But I really doubt it. I really yeah. doubt it because he was a consummate musician who could have gone in any number of directions as you do when you improvise. You are the kind of Buddy Rich. I am uh, America's Buddy Rich. You are. You are. You're the first well, person to say it, but I'm going to push that. Was Buddy Rich was American though? Was I it? mean, uh, the comedy's Buddy Rich. That's a better way to say American it. comedy's I'm, Buddy yeah. Rich. I'm American. I'm contemporary American comedy's okay. Buddy Rich. Yeah, but you had you needed two takes of that, though, didn't you, to get that? I did. Yeah. So maybe I'm not. <laughs> Maybe I was in Buddy my Rich heyday. <laughs> uh, maybe I was in my heyday. I have a medal somewhere, <laughs> which proves I was on the top of the mountain for a brief moment. I don't know. That was my. That was what. That's what made me tense with that film. Yeah, I and I don't thought, think you were shredding the movie. I think we had a conversation to defend your. Yeah, you're yeah. not. You you just couldn't buy into the story where that was the center point of it. And I also I th I think it's a funny thing that that in this country, if you don't mind me offering something that may sound to you impertinent. I think Americans are great believers in the guru, um, the, 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 the mentor, the mm -hmm. coach. You see, I find it, I think to British people, we are baffled by the idea, by the dominance of the coach figure, the sensei, 
who everyone defers to for their entire life, that someone coaches high school basketball for two years, they are then referred to as coach for the rest of their lives. You know, that they have this holy, we don't have anything like, we don't really have an equivalent of that. Um, and it's I think it's, it's evident in the sports we like. So yeah. they use a, a game of soccer, as you would call it, 45 minutes, those guys, those young kids run out. There's nothing, there's nothing that the coach can do. The coach can't call yeah. a play. The coach can't steer anybody. He could pick the side and, and talk about strategy, but he can't. He's not actually mentoring moment by moment. Whereas mm -hmm. in so many American sports, this guy on the sideline with the headphones uh, is, is yelling at people four feet taller than him and telling them how to play their game. That that's that's is surprising to me in the land of the individual. That is surprising to me that that Americans. Uh, well, how about in acting? Is there like a British guru who like great actors might go back to? Like they get a thing like, oh, I got to go back to the coach. Like a formative teacher. Well, there never was for me because I didn't okay. go, I didn't go to any sort. I had no in, uh, instruction. You uh, came maybe, out of sketch, right? Kind of. Yeah. You started yeah. in sketch. But yeah. I mean, maybe maybe people do have that figure in their lives i feel like it's i don't know i think it may be less common in britain yeah. i don't know why we just um it's probably healthy is it, it, i'm not saying you you guys are unhealthy well i'll take it yeah you're not you're not taking uh it doesn't I hurt have been it's, just an, it's just an observation yeah, i've yeah. been making notes on the subtext yeah, this yeah. whole time and i wrote down unhealthy a couple times when yeah, we were talking yeah about accusing that. us of being unhealthy yes. yeah no i do think that there is some, and i do feel like the best coaches i've the best coach, and maybe that's why I like really liked working for Armando when we were in that rehearsal process. It was he was never like never telling you that you were wrong in right. doing something. It wasn't like, oh no, that was the wrong choice to make. He's like, right. that is a choice that just does not work for this scene. You know what I mean? And there is a difference in those two. That's like, exactly uh, actually, like a lot of trust there. That's a now that you say it, that is exactly my memory too, that he would uh I mean, it, the, he was another guy. It was such a pleasure to make him laugh. It was yes. a real thrill to yes. make him laugh. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. Wasn't it? It yeah. was like And a, it was always the dumbest things, like <laughs> Tim and I singing or falling off a chair. Yeah. yeah. It was the surprising, infantile, dumb stuff that yeah. would tickle him, and that's yeah. that was great joy. I agree but it with was, you. But you're right, that there was no, you never felt like something was wrong or that you'd completely missed the point of the, that yeah. moment. It was just, well, let's try another one. Yeah. And how about this? Or, or, or sometimes not even how about this, just try another one. You're right, there, were, there was no sort of stricture. You know, you're straying from the method, from, from the holy path. I always find that, I don't know, I do kind of find that a little bit frustrating sometimes where like, I, don't know, I feel like I'm just gonna repeat everything you said. So I'm gonna I'm Well, gonna I'll just there. say, yeah, you, you go. You're, Tim's very conscious about over talking. That's why. I've, that's, I've over That's what you're experiencing so much. Because when podcast. you listen to the episodes, really? I get really well, excited. Yeah, and then I talk a lot. But for me, like Shakespeare is an example. I, I've never done. I'm sure you've done Shakespeare, right? No, never. Okay, I, I did one at university. Yeah. Okay, but, but never professionally. No. But I feel like that to me is exactly the standard. Like if I were to step inside that and recreate the language of William Shakespeare. I would be constant, constantly be conscious of like get the tempo, get, and it would inhibit me to explore and bend right. it to what I'm good at. Do you know what I mean? I so do. There are I certain art I... forms that I can't enter into without exalting right. it beyond my beyond well, my ability or beyond I don't know. I have to be so is, perfect in the pocket. Nothing is beyond your ability. No. Uh, but, that's not but, true. But okay, I think. I was thinking about this on the way over here, that there was a, there is a difference in American and British approaches to acting because I suspect almost all American actors conceive of themselves existing on screen for the, for the majority of their career. The screen will be a big part of it. In Britain, I think it's maybe less than half. People imagine, ah, oh, I will spend most of my time on stage and what that means, doing a, a repertoire, and what that means is that they're constantly performing roles that have been performed before and will be performed again. And they, they are accustomed to sort of fitting into a pre-existing, they're renting the role mm -hmm. instead of creating it, owning it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think Americans are much more, much more confidently assume ownership of a role. 
you know, Travis Bickle. Yeah. No one was, there was, there would be yeah. no other Travis Bickle. Yeah. So, so whatever he did, that's it. And there is no, there is no further interpretation required. That's, it's done. Yeah. Whereas I think, um, I think British people, you know, I, I'm going to play Colonel Pickering in Pygmalion or something. Well, I know 10,000 people have done it and another 10,000 will. And so what, I've got to fit into a smaller um a I tend to choose hole. things where I don't have to fit into them, whether it's really? learning an instrument, because an instrument, you can't fake it. You have to hit the note, and Shakespeare, you have to hit the language, and so dance, if, you have to be a formal If you, know, you got the opportunity gesture. to play, uh, play a deep southern um, <laughs> character, would you, <laughs> would you go for it? Would you think, I want to show my range? Uh, I would... Uh, interesting. I guess I would go a whole hog, but I would probably get with a dialect coach yeah. and then I would probably get tight about like oh I'm not hit like the way you said I know what words I can say and not right. show I'm a fraud right if I started going full southern and thinking I'm confident and then I sat down with a dialect coach and she or he changed like that's not a good southern accent yeah <laughs> I would be in my head for the rest of the run yes. of that well thing. I've, I've just done that yeah I've just played um, a, a character a South African character Oh, and that's, that's a, a very, tricky one. It's a tricky one. Um, made tricky by the fact that no one else on the set, well, even spoke English. Never mind, uh, uh, could hear a South African accent. Really? So I would do a thing and they go, oh, that was great. And I was thinking, well, it really wasn't. <laughs> it really, really wasn't. But, you know, can I, you know, can I try one more? Um, Did and you it is take very... A, yeah. It is incredibly constricting. Yeah. If you care about the... I mean, some people, sometimes people don't care, and it doesn't matter that right. they don't. Yeah, right. And I look at those actors, and I think, how did they... How, <laughs> how did you get, get away with how that? How did you get away with that? Because yeah. that's awful, but it doesn't matter. It's not relevant. Right. But but if you've got... If it's every word of it is pinging in your head, like wrong, wrong, yeah. really wrong, almost right, no, wrong... You know, that's the, that's the sort of inner voice that you're, you're using on yourself. It's, it's very, it's a, it's a strain, yeah. Yeah, and, and you just I, push through it, right? I think I remembered what I was going to say. Oh, thank God. Thank God. This had better yeah, be we, interesting. We've, we've been filling in for you. <laughs> this had <while>. better <laughs> you, be. Thank you guys well. for vamping while <laughs> I figured it out. If you're going to interrupt, this had better be good. <laughs> so I think that there is like a sort of contrarian in me that when it comes to like that sort of like you're kind of renting the role thing when i hear about like and i love shakespeare and i love going to watch shakespeare and i've never really felt any deep call to perform it right over and over again and i think part of that might be the contrarian of somebody who the people who are the best at that can sit there and be like well i went back to the folio and the folio has it this way and so therefore, because of this pronunciation, because of this meter, or because of this canter or whatever, it is performed this way. And there's always that part of me. It's like, fuck you, it's not. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's that thing. I think maybe that is the reason I'm attracted to this stuff more because it is like a living, it can be like a living, a living thing. process and a living thing rather than something that has lived its life and we present it as it. Like it's well, not how really would that apply to a modern play? Let's say you were doing a new play. You were offered a role in a new play. And it, I mean, how much of it is to do with the eight times a week uh, you know, repetition honest, I of actually, anything? Could you do that? Could yes. You, you can repeat. I can. And actually there is a, because I like, I didn't start studying theater until I was in college. And, but I started it there and I do love it. And I love doing a bunch of shows. The thing that I miss the most about being in a play compared to being on like a film set is that you you get like the physical movement into your bones in a play right. where like the physical motions can just be autopilot you just your body knows where to go yeah. in a way that like i don't always find that in every scene that i'm performing in. no you know where you're like look we have this we have this set for like two more hours like we have like a company move like we got to go yeah. you know what mm -hmm. i mean so you've got to stand on that mark and do and every part of your body is saying, but I wouldn't. Or, yeah. or not just I wouldn't, nobody would. Nobody would. Nobody or, having contemplated, you know, a dead body in the is just gonna stand there and make that speech. It's yeah. it's sort of not possible. And there is then also the other thing, even if it is like, oh yeah, no, a human being would stand on that mark and say that, 
sometimes it's just like my body does not feel comfortable in this space it doesn't feel natural the movements mm, don't mm. feel natural but if you do it for months and months and months it's yeah. just a part of you yeah. that's one thing that i miss but i do i do like being in like a modern play in like a workshop ex experience uh. seems like obviously like in plays like a lot more uh, authority is given to the playwright mm -hmm. and you know ultimately they're going to be like, no, it's this. But there's still space yeah. to be like, what if it's this? And if the playwright is like, no, it's not, then okay, cool. But we but, tried it. But you know that if you present something that is interesting and valuable and, and or funny or, yeah. or poignant, well, the playwright would be an idiot not to yeah. seize on it or yeah. accept it. Yeah. And yeah. I like that sort of like collaborative yeah. thing. I like that. So that would that. be the best of both. That would things. probably be the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. That is the dream, though. If you walked into every gig with a workshop mentality. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes when you audition and you just play with it and you're like, I don't know. They, they say they want this guy, but I'm going to do it this way. And lo and behold, they choose you. Or being in a process like Veep, you're just sort of workshopping it. And you get this tremendous ownership and confidence with mm. that. Beyond learning the character, just that mentality, it's, it serves you so well to be fluid and receptive and take chances. And like sometimes stepping into Shakespeare or whatever, you get rigid or I get rigid. I feel like, oh, I'm trying to recreate a role that's been done 200 times. It's the detective who solves the mystery, whatever it is. You just get so rigid and you're trying to hit a standard that is not living. But the workshop mentality allows mm. you to be imperfect yeah. And vulnerable and that's like people who own that I admire because you have to, for me I had like Armando for the show we did invited us into that space but there are people who own that and walk into everything they do with sort of that well I think I mean I think I learned a lot doing Veep I do like what I that sort of confidence in one's ability to just uh, respond to something, go with something, make it uh, just true in that moment, even if it actually was a deviation from what the story was. Well, we kind of need the story to wind up here rather than there, so that doesn't work, which is fine. But you know, just having a sort of, um, I think I got more confident in my, just from watching you guys doing it. Um, I thought, wow, I've, n I've never seen this done so adeptly, so enjoyably, and actually so efficiently. That's the thing, because, uh, no, what I mean is... That's, that's a weird way to describe well, no, our show. Veep was what not I, an efficient show. No, Veep but, was not efficient. But it could have been so... If you weren't as good as you all are, it could have been absolutely catastrophic. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, you would not get true, to the yeah. end of a show in two months. You just yeah. would never get there, because it would just be a mess. Right. But actually... Yes, you, you, you meandered and took time and there were things were tried that never made it to the... But it was nonetheless, you know, you were getting through huge amounts of stuff and brilliant stuff. Yeah. It, it, was, uh, it, it was much more efficient than it really ought to have been, if you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean. I, if, if Casey Bloys is listening, which, isn't, which he isn't, <laughs> His head is exploding right now, thinking about the d uh, description of our show being efficient. Oh, really? I mean, he's probably like, yeah, I had to sign the checks for your efficiency. Yeah, for your, and uh, I, for your <laughs> extra rehearsals. How, how are you spelling efficiency? Is that with two Fs? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I think, too, you weren't just watching it. I'm sure you got pulled into it in scenes where we were fucking around, and I, I'm certain it wasn't just passively because we were all doing it and yeah. every but you know at some moment in every scene whether it was rehearsal or being filmed somebody was fucking around yeah and doing something actually now you've reminded me there were those moments they were we would just stop wouldn't we for a couple of days yeah uh, yeah oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah fix was, the script that was mysterious <laughs> how are we would be flown back to la because the scripts weren't ready Okay, so that part was maybe less. Yeah, but that, that was sub efficient. I'm talking about the the you know the twelve hours on the floor yeah. of the set when yeah. when 12 I twelve hours, t 15, eight, 15, 16, yeah, <laughs> for but the I, actors. But what that twenty two for the crew. The yeah. most the most teamsters twenty four. <laughs> most memorable thing. One of the most memorable parts of the whole experience. There was a day. It wasn't a day off. We were rehearsing in a hotel room somewhere. And Julia was doing a scene. I can't remember who, who she was doing it with. And I don't know if it ever made it to the show. 
But the, the premise was the president can't sleep. She goes down to the kitchen. The White House chef is finishing her shift. And you get the idea that she's got to get home because she's got a kid who's not well and she wants to really get out of there. But she can't leave because Julia won't let her leave. She just won't, <laughs> but without being aware of the fact that she can't leave, that she's not letting her leave. So she just was, how do you make that? Uh, and the chef is having it well. Um, it, 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 you know, and I remember that improvisation, I think they probably went on for about 40 minutes. And I was so entranced by it. I thought this is this is the greatest and truest performance of anything I've ever seen. Yeah. And none yeah. and neither one of them had any idea where it was going to go. Yeah. And they it was just effortless. Actually it was a great piece of jazz. It was like being in the room when when two great although I'm embarrassed to say I can't remember who the other actor was um, well I mean it's I, I don't think don't, it I don't think it made no it. I don't I don't remember think that, I don't remember that, that there was all. no scene like no. but it was it was exquisite it was oh god I, I was there ever a scene that you and Julie or you and anybody had that was sort of built around improvisation that you were like oh it was a pretty good scene when we started but through that process I like loved that scene and loved what we found in there I am not sure I've ever loved anything I've actually directly been involved in or okay. been a part of that's, you the, ever that's watched, like the humble part of you and like uh, I, have you yeah. ever watched an episode of Veep not that I've been in okay okay um, it's I've pretty watched, good. I've watched. Is it? Yeah, you're pretty good in the show. I, I've yeah. watched l lots of episodes that I'm not in. Okay. But I, I tend to avoid that. I find that's I'm not just, uncommon for really? some actors. Yeah, we've met a lot of actors yeah. who don't like watching themselves. Yeah, yeah. I'll watch it once and then I'm done. All day, every day, baby. Yeah, you love watching yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be. <laughs> that's you'll be not I, true. I think, I think I can probably watch it, you know, five years from now. I'll, I'll probably yeah, yeah, do yeah. it. It's, um, yeah, that's true. Time does when, help. When you. I have no hair, and then I could <laughs> say, well, that was a time when I had some hair. You know, that'll be. Yeah. And you're like, it was so much better back then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I Make Veep great again. Yeah. The, 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 uh, there was a question that I wrote down. Come on, Tim. I got Out it. Out with it. Doing so I have good. one if you need one. I'm doing so good. Here's just the thing. Is there something that you've been involved in the, uh, involved in, in the past, like a, a show or a movie or anything like that, that you thought was really good that you don't think got the attention it deserved? Small or big, anything, just like, oh, I really enjoyed that and it never really found an audience, that kind of thing. Well, I don't, I never feel that my enjoyment has got, anything to do with it I mean I don't you know I don't look at things that are enjoyable as give as that giving them any value oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay or In sorry fact, I sometimes guess maybe... it's the reverse if something's exquisitely painful it must have value because otherwise what was the pain for that's mm -hmm. a that's a very Presbyterian sort of way of looking at the world that mm -hmm. pain is virtue um, transforming if, if people tell you that they had such a blast making that movie, I, it just makes me go, you know, well, yeah. well, I hated it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How's that? How does that affect the blast you had? Oh, my God. Well, it does laughed all day long. It doesn't indicate a good movie. That's for it, sure. It, that's it, for does, sure. it doesn't. It, no, it's not a guarantee. That's not a guaranteed sign of a good movie. I agree with that 100%. I don't know. I No, I think... I think, by and large, the audience, particularly now, where people have so many opportunities to find things later, you know, there the once was a time if a movie didn't work in the first three days, they just yanked it and it was, and they threw it on a bonfire. Mm -hmm. uh, now I think everything has an opportunity to live again, and people can find it and go, "Oh, I really love that. Why did they, or why did they cancel that immediately?" Um, do you have something like that in your past? Like may maybe not from your own enjoyment, but from like you, you really thought like that final product was something that was really good and maybe I was proud no, of that work. No, I mean, I feel generally speaking, when I watch things, if I ever do sort of 15 years later, uh -huh. I, th I do find myself thinking that wasn't as awful as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, so I, and I have got quite a few of those. I sort of look back and go, Actually, that was yeah, that was a, that was all right. That wasn't. Um, I wouldn't have made my children embarrassed going to school. <laughs> um, but uh, no, a thing that, that that sort of burns in my heart as the one thing that I would like to be remembered for that no one ever paid attention to. I don't. I don't have 
that. I'm still sort of looking for that. Okay. I think that's what that's why you keep doing it. I mean, if you ever did have that, wouldn't you wouldn't you want to just stop retire? Like Dorothy Parker supposedly played one shot of golf in her life and it was a hole in one and she said that's it. I'm not I'm not yeah, yeah. I'm not doing that again. Yeah. Cuz you're forever chasing. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. I don't know. If there was a job if you didn't do this job what what do you think you would want your yeah. job to be? MI6. M- ideally. <laughs> Um, a job that you would at least be curious about and possibly have decent a chance at. of. And, de- and be decent at. Yeah. Or you'd be so curious. obviously yeah. MI6 is off the table because that's not a real possibility. We're talking about things that could really happen. Or well, an American. You're, you're going to feel so stupid when it turns out <laughs> that all along. Um, I did have a, when I was very young, I did have a... Um, rather romantic idea about joining the Hong Kong police. There was a big scandal back in the 70s. They fired half the, there there was corruption and so on. They got rid of all of these guys and they had a big recruitment drive. And I thought, I had this idea that I could go and be sort of Trevor Howard in the third man. You know, I could just Hmm. um, wear a duffel coat and smoke a pipe. (laughs) and unite young lovers on the bridge or whatever. And <laughs> sort of Claude Rains kind of figure. Um, In an exotic location. Yeah. And I think, I've got a feeling that I would have done that reasonably well. I think I'd have been a, a reasonably good policeman. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's it's cool. not really cool. Well, I think um, that's, I, I'll good, say it's pretty cool because that's not the answer I was in any way expecting. Um, but... Since then, that was a long time ago. That was uh-huh. a childhood ambition. I, since then, I would say musician. That's what I would have. Um, that was. That's my. Uh, that's the boat I. I didn't get on early enough. Yeah. I was going to say miss. I, I'd be lucky enough to sort of, you know, do a leg or two on it. But yeah, uh, I. Um, I should have got on that early. Do you do a fair amount of like you play live shows? There is a certain aspect, even that might not be your main career. There is like an actual aspect of that being work. For you right like you release albums and play shows and uh yeah i mean we did we we did uh i had a band and we we we, we literally this sounds pompous but we actually did world tours i mean we yeah. went to Australia that's really cool and, uh russia and we played in the kremlin whoa um, and when you're doing that it's tremendously joyful i would imagine yeah like freeing like in a way yes. that acting might not be correct yeah <laughs> i believe you there's the first half is is nerve-wracking. I always found that the second half, once I knew we'd sort of got over, as the, uh, and we sort of, it's not, it's not to say we had them, because that's, a, that's an awful way of talking about an audience, but we had won their approval up to that point, and we knew the second half was pretty damn strong, and that was a glorious moment yeah. to actually just sit back and play and let these singers sing and these musicians blow their, that was just, uh, that was amazing. amazing. That's awesome. Um, I had two questions. We've been kind of doing like a one-one kind of back and forth thing, but that's cool. If you take of, well, you yeah. took my question about it's the job. Of, I mean, I technically, bad cop, I always bad. ask that question. So okay, bad yeah, cop and bad. worse cop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've spent way too much time together, Tim and I. <laughs> um, what is your relationship to nicotine? Because I'm someone who's addicted to nicotine, and I remember you used to be a smoker. Yeah, I, I chew the I gum am. all the time. I I'm am. Che- so I, 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 I smoke cigarettes. That's, yeah. that's my relationship. Have you ever tried to break it or you don't engage in um, that? I have for what's the longest, probably sort of eight, nine months. Um, Hypnotism or just Iron Will? I did that Alan Carr book. Yeah, I read that. Uh, which was, and then I went to one of the courses, which involved a tiny bit of hypnotism, but it had no effect. Okay. No, I struggle with it too. Uh, that's the only reason I'm at. I still chew the gum. And then my other question is, do you guys want to hear my Jesus story? Yes. You can say no. That we should say that this, we had a conversation with you uh, off mic right before we started about, about Jesus and about how like that would be kind of hard to sum up, I guess. But this isn't just coming out of nowhere, yeah, I think right, is what right. I'm trying to say. Fair enough. <laughs> Even if it did, it's still a decent Yeah, no, it's story. still good. It wasn't a criticism. No. So yeah. I went to my 10, you, I think you said yes, or you don't want to hear it. No, no. I, okay. I, I, okay. I, I, want, I want to hear it on record. Okay. I want to hear your Jesus story. So Pat. I went to my 10-year high school reunion, and there was t- another guy in my class, Ed, uh, who was a class clown. I was sort of a mischievous class clown in my high school. And he got up at the banquet, and he told some jokes that were street jokes and 
kind of offensive to women. <laughs> they weren't truly funny. It was like, what? And then after those jokes, he went into, uh, you know, it's fun to laugh and have a good time, but have you guys found Jesus? And then he lectured the whole high school class about how Jesus could save our lives and how we needed to commit to Jesus and how he found Jesus and it changed his life. And it was really scary because the people I was with we were half expecting a gun to be pulled out at some point. It had that like abrupt oh, tension oh, of like, wow. this is really disruptive and this guy's a little crazy, I think. Yeah. And to go from like off color jokes to transition into Jesus, yeah. which is kind of off of what we talked about before the show. Like, even if you're Jesus, you're still being rude to your wife. You know, even if you're Jesus crazy, you're still being rude to your wife. Like, at what part? Right. I don't understand the whole adopting his lifestyle, if you will. <laughs> so he went from awful jokes that were negative towards women, uh, might have gone over in the 50s, let's say, and then he transitioned into, so that was like the Jesus story, basically. It was really crazy, and I've since never gone back to one of my high school reunions, because it was kind of bizarre. Yeah. He went he went straight into, may the Lord bless and keep you, after saying, like, your wife doesn't need to watch because there's a clock on, clock on, on the it. stove. Two of those. He did two of he those. He did two of those. Yeah. And then straight into... Yeah. How know, old was he? When He was like 30 when we were out of high school, so we're all like 30, 28, 10 think, years. Did he bring up Jesus because he sensed the jokes had not gone well? No. And he wanted to show... Uh, but I, yeah, I've got something. No, else. he had a built-in transition, oh, which was something oh, wow. like, which was something like, you know, it's okay. fun to laugh and make <laughs> jokes, as if what he had done was taken us to this laughing place. Yeah, but the truth is, can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the truth is, though, so he had a built-in transition. He knew he was going to do two jokes that reminded us of, oh yeah, he was the class clown, and then he was going to transition into this new purpose in his life, and he was going to share it with everyone. And it was really crazy. It was very strange. So that is that's unnerving. Yeah, that's really unnerving. Yeah, interesting, right? But it it falls into sort of what yeah. we were saying before, like these people who are holy rollers, but they're still sort of yeah not changed. In, it, it doesn't in, in, seem to change. It doesn't change as much. I mean, I'm not one. As yeah, I, as I said, and um, it doesn't seem to change as much as I imagined it would if it happened to me. I, right. I feel like I would stop. Everything. Or I would alter everything about my Yes. Life. Everything. Yes. Um, and people who, the only thing it alters is uh, church once a week, mm -hmm. uh, maybe sing in the choir. And, yeah. They uh, tithe, not 10%, you know, yeah. 4 4%. Yeah. 4%. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. I don't know. That's surprising to me. Maybe right? yell at people who don't have, like, nativity scenes on their lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's part of yeah. what they're, they're I, changed about, but that's about it. Yeah. My attraction to... Uh, any sort of anything religious tends to be there's so much chaos generally and i think everybody's adult life but also in hours in that nothing's ever for sure and we don't have like a job all the time and every once in a while i'm just like oh man you get to wear the same clothes every day oh i know yeah you just like you go to this one place to eat you yeah. have one book to read that's it yeah like it just seems I'm so... I'm attracted to the simplicity of it, yes. like a cult or a strong religious like community. Well, either the simplicity or the ornate, because that, that thing you were talking about with the, with the British monarchy, you know, there's something about the color and the vibrancy, yeah. you know, because they know how to do that. They know how to put on a good show, as the church does very yeah. often. Magnificent buildings, great music. Mm -hmm. I mean, great music, yeah. beautiful rituals, Art. I, I'm yeah. absolutely uh, art. I'm absolutely on for all of that. It's just the, it's just that little god bit. That yeah, I, that's where I, <laughs> that's where I stumble. I've been, I've been watching. You ever watch that show, Monk? Yes. Uh, so we've been start. We've been watching it with uh, our kid. The kids are like eleven now, and it's sort of like it's like a good show for that age. And that I, lo I loved it as an adult. I love it as an adult. And it's like a little scary, but not too scary. There right. are good jokes. But as I was watching it, I realized, like, what a fucking pro Tony Shalhoub is. Like, incredible actor. Mm. We don't need to say that. But I'm watching that show, and I'm like, what a fucking genius. That man took, like, a nine-year job where he had one costume yeah. in every show. Oh. What a genius fucking actor. 
yeah. who is just like, oh yeah, I wear this suit buttoned all the way up. Yeah. Like the woman from Game of Thrones who played like Lady Tyrell, like the grandmother Tyrell. Mm -hmm. I heard a story that like she has this sort of ornate headdress simply because she was like, I'm not coming in here two and a half hours before we start. I'll come in. Wow. Like, I'm not coming yeah. in for the fucking hair. A five-minute wardrobe. Five-minute wardrobe. We're throwing the hat on, and I'm going out. You see, I would F think that that's just a matter of good... You know, you roll the dice, and that's just a matter of good fortune to actually demand yeah. that or ask... I wouldn't occur to me. I mean, it's pretty cool. Wouldn't We're learning... You me. can do that. I think you're you at a point in your that. career yeah. where you can say, like, you're going to glue a mustache on me. I'm not going to grow one. Or whatever it would be. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can I, be more demanding. You have earned outrageous no, demands. You have. Yeah. You have. I would actually go the other way. I would grow one because I find having one stuck on so irritating. Yeah, it's harder yeah. in some ways. Yeah. yeah, especially if it's hot and muggy. But I, the good thing is a beard, if you do grow it. one, you then get a reputation for committing yeah. in a way that other people... That's real, isn't it? That's real. Yeah. 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 Um, I, this is a question that I ask most guests, um, but I am... Uh, I am slightly altering it for you. Uh, how many members of parliament do you think that you could beat up? <laughs> <laughs> how are many the, members are, the, are there? Are there uh, 620 okay. or so? Are they coming at me all as a single mob? No, no, or no, no. I, no. I, I, I think he's talking in, individual matches. Individual We're in a narrow, run -ins. narrow alleyway. Yes. So it's one at a time. Yeah. yeah. One at a time, and you're fully rested in between each one. You don't get to like the 300th and are like, oh, fuck, I've gotten through 200. And it's almost like you can size up the whole lot and go, no, I don't need to face him. I'll lose. I don't need to face him. I'll lose. Yeah. Okay. The ones that you think like, okay, I'll go in the hallway and I could probably beat that person up. Yeah. Percentage, number, whatever you want to. Well, I suppose on average, they're, my, they're probably around about my age, maybe mm -hmm. younger, probably younger now. Mm-hmm. So, I'd say, well, I, I'm going to assume a third. Could okay. I take, could I take a third? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, definitely. Sure. I, I, I think you might be selling yourself. Even though I am secretly thinking three quarters. But, but <laughs> I, I, I'm, going to say, I'm going to say a third just because I don't want to be calling people out and getting into... Yeah. Someone's know. going to stop you. I, I heard yeah. you said you could beat yeah. up two thirds yeah. of us. Yeah. Let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> No, I think that's a. I think that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. What is it like? The youth and verb will be defeated by old age and treachery, like every single time. Like. Yeah, cunning. Cunning. Yeah. Old age and cunning. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, I think you're a three quarters guy. Yeah. I don't. Oh. I'm not super familiar with Parliament. And right. Their makeup, and, and their and their fighting skills. Yeah. Yeah. Their experience. Because we don't have much brawling in Parliament. We've had very little brawling. There's a lot of shouting, though, right? A lot of shouting. Yeah. I yeah. like that. I do too. I you like have, you have quite a lot of shouting in. I feel not like when traditionally. It's, done, it, when it's, it's not it's traditionally, recent, it? and out here, it's, much like everything that we do, it comes across as I think crass and mismanaged, and it doesn't have like it doesn't have like centuries of uh, of tradition behind it. It's just like oh, you're just some loud dickhead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas when I hear the the arguments in Parliament, they know it's really just about the sort of the nine, nine, nine. You know what I mean? It's like it's about the noise. No, it's funny. I think I think of it the other way around. I think we are that some of that heckling, some of that sort of rowdy um, yelling, and I I think of the American scene as being in some ways more. I, I mean, until the famous who was it? who yelled out, you lie. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was the sort Sorry, of- Obama's. That yeah. was like someone puncturing the balloon. Yes. Uh, what a terrible, terrible uh, moment. I actually think of America as being more sort of decorous in a way. Um, I think maybe the examples I'm thinking of have been since then. But you see, it may be like uh, the way we respond to each other's music and television is that we see the best of your stuff and, and whatever we've done that has has pleased you was actually a tiny proportion so we're probably not getting a full picture yeah. of either country um there's enough. only one answer we all move in together as like roommates in london for like a year and yeah. then we all move and we like we all live together like in a house in la to prove together. what what are we proving just to learn experiment? about each other's oh, cultures oh, 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 oh we're not filming this oh no no just for fun 
Just because, you know, obviously it's clear we're buds. Just understand our misconceptions and if they're yeah. where, where they are. And yeah, and, like, you have to kind of live it. It's like, you know, when you learn a language, it's like you have to, like, you know, sort of, like, yeah. you, really you, throw yourself into it. You, you gotta, you've got to buy grapefruit in that language. You yes. can't just. <laughs> you can't just. No. Total can't. immersion. Yeah. Immersion. Yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. we are after. Yeah. What is the Portuguese word for immersion? For example, for example, that's the kind of <laughs> immersio. <laughs> immersio. I'm gonna go ahead and check the notes on that. Not one. a bad bet. Yeah. Um, I think that's yeah. yeah. Probably. I was just gonna ask: Have you ever been on a game show? Because we talked about game shows earlier. Um, 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 no, I don't think I have. No. Is there one you think you'd be really good at? No. No. <laughs> Terrible. I mean, I did this sort of. Uh, you see, you strike me as educated. Like you would do well on like a trivia show that was out of England, perhaps like Common English History or something. Thank you for saying I strike you that way. Um, it's so it's worked <laughs> uh, because that's not that's absolutely not who I am or not what I can do. It's not what I. It's not what I do well. No. Particularly now, as I find my memory absolutely just giving up on me altogether. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my day is spent going. Oh, what's the name of that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was in that thing oh, with the the woman who was in that other thing. Oh, you know that's yeah. He, uh, he's a very good friend, <laughs> <laughs> godfather to my children. Um, yeah, no, that's my day. That's, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are you? Uh, I spend a fair amount of you, that. By the way, I am fifty eight. Yeah. Going to be fifty nine soon. In two well, weeks. I imagine if you're 58, that you would eventually become 59. I and I turned 50 in Baltimore. Yeah, you, you, you weren't there yet. We had a great 50th celebration. Yeah, epic birthday party, killer. So, but anyways, uh, how old are you? I am 45. I will. Tr I turned 45 in June. Right. Yeah. And how old are you? It's all Can we ask? 64. Okay. I don't really. I didn't. I just didn't want to leave you out. I didn't want to ask. I, you just, no, you know, no, that's I mean, okay. I was trying to, yeah. No, I appreciate that. Um, thank you for thank serving you. Tim's ego. Yeah. He would really, we, I would hear yeah. about it when Why you left. Why didn't he ask me? Yeah. Because he, he, he didn't care? Because he didn't care? Because he didn't care. He didn't want to open up another long question? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I can uh, speak for both Matt and I when we say thank you very much. Being here, great it's admirers very, very of kind. you. Yeah. Uh, this is like Of a, you and of your work. And it's very, you. very kind. And I know you've had... Uh, Everyone else who's been in Veep yep. on multiple times. Multiple times. No, yeah. we have a real completist mentality. We're trying to get everybody who came through and played a yeah. significant part. And you were definitely... Tom James is such an epic character. And so he just rode that line so good. Oh. Yeah. He did. Oh, he was, now. He did. He was really good. No, I'm feeling warm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you off with those yeah. good vibes. And yeah. Uh, thank you guys very much for listening. Um, Is there anything much. you want to walk back oh, yeah. or double down on? We always offer our guests at the uh, end of this conversation, if you stepped in it, you go, you don't want to walk back this opinion. Or if you had an opinion, you're like, no, no I don't I'm gonna think so. Except that I know, as you both know, a mischievous tabloid journalist can, can find anything. Mm -hmm. um, if you say good morning that's like you know mm. timothy simon snubs evenings by <laughs> by uh, you know onlookers were left open mouthed at his foul mouthed rant uh as he specifically singled out mornings as being better than evenings you know yeah. they can do that and they do and that's their daily well bread. the good news is this so show I, you can't stop people from doing this it. show lives in relative obscurity i don't know that it's a high profile I moment say, for you i've never heard of it <laughs> um, <laughs> And you did well on your first, this is legitimately your first podcast. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I think it is, yeah. Is it? That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. I'm honored. It's amazing. All Thank right. you guys very much for listening. Thank you. You can you, find everyone. us wherever you find podcasts. You can rate, review, and subscribe, and all those great things. Thank you guys very much for being here. Thanks, you. Peace. Peace.